Today's deck, I am not going to attempt to pronounce its name because I heard so many different pronunciations. I'm just going to call it the X8. Now, before we start, I'd like to tell you a story. Now, recently I got a chance to try a few decks, SMSR M400, Burson Composer 3, as well as the Topping D90. Now, if you have not seen the video, go check it out. These are decks between 800 to 1002, 1001. And at the time when I was testing these decks, I actually got my friends involved. So I'll give them the deck, ask them to evaluate it for me at the same time. Now, what happened though, during that time, I actually also gave them the X8 without telling them how much it is. So I guess in their mind, they're probably like, oh yeah, the M400 is about the performance of the D90, about the performance of the Guster X26, around there, right? So in their mind, they're probably like, yeah, the X8 should be around that same performance too. I like doing that. I like giving stuff to my friends without telling them the price. I like inviting my friends over to listen to speakers without telling them the price because I want them to guess how much do you think this performance is worth. Unfortunately, Mr. Cantor was able to pick up that the X8 was not as good as the SMSL M400, for example. He was like, the performance is okay. Lah. Not as good as the other DAX I tried, but it's okay. Now, that's understandable given the fact that the other DAX are two, three times the price of this X8. However, I told him, you know, in the box, there's an op amp. And this X8, you can change the op amp. Can you change it and then come back to me and let me know what you think? So he changed it, he tried it, and then he got back to me. Oh, Thomas, man, after I changed the op amp, this is interesting. So what do I mean by interesting? Let's talk about it in today's video. So this unit was sent to me by Hi-Fi Go, their online retail store. And I asked them, why should anybody buy from you? Now, they told me that they give very good customer service. In fact, they linked me to this website where that website evaluates websites. So they sent me uh, two websites and I'm just gonna put it here up on screen. So just to show me that they have a very good track record. Also, if you go to their website, you're gonna see a blog section where they review gear that they carry. Now, I would say if you're planning to purchase this product, at least give them a shot. So I think it's important that we support each other. So I'm just going to put the specs here up on the screen. I'm not going to go into detail. I like the build quality. I like the fact that it's very small, has all the major connections, USB, optical, and coaxial. Perhaps the only thing missing is Bluetooth. You can use it as a DAC only or as a preamp. Now I do face a bit of challenge reviewing this DAC because I don't have a lot of experience with DAC in this price range. To say that something is good or not, it has to be compared to something, right? Oh, this DAC is great compared to what? Compared to a $1,000 DAC, a $5,000 DAC, or a $300 DAC. This DAC is about 300 US. So therefore, for me, I need to compare to DACs around that price range. Now, I'm sure some of you will be asking, so how does it compare to, let's say, the Topping E90, the shit something something DAC? The truth is, I don't know because I don't have any experience in this area. So take my review with a grain of salt number one. And number two, I'm just going to use this time to share with you my experience and I'll give you something to think about at the end of this video. Now regarding how it sounds, I would say relative to the DAX I'm used to, it's more towards the cool side of neutral. Top end slightly tilted up, bass, mid-range, I guess it's relatively neutral. Now the top end tilting up is quite common with DAX around this price range, at least from my experience in the past. And uh, that's one thing I always notice: maximum clarity, maximum sharpness, a lot of detail. But I would say this though, this DAC, despite being 300 bucks, sounds better in terms of that uh, digital glare, the way it controls that part better than the DAX I've tried in the past. You know, a few hundred bucks more than this one. All right, so I'm gonna just quickly dive into why I think this unit is worth your time to explore if you're shopping for a DAC in this price range. Now, at the beginning of this video, I told you the story of my friend, Mr. Cantor, changing the op amp of this DAC. Now, after the change, he was very surprised. So for this unit, you can actually change the op amp. Now think of it as changing tubes in a tube integrated amp. Once you put better tubes in, the sound quality should improve. 
You see, the op -ed that came with this deck is probably, what, a buck, two bucks? Now, the question is, what happens if you put an op -ed that costs 85 bucks US into this deck? Now, I happen to have two of them, the Burson Vivid, the Burson Classic Model op -ed. Yes, I know it sounds a bit ridiculous to put an $85 op -ed into a $300 deck, but I was curious. I want to know how much of an improvement I get. To change the op amp is very easy, just turn the thing upside down, and screw two screws, remove a cover, and there you have access to the op amp, just remove it and just swap in the new one. The problem with the Burson op amp is that it's very big, so once you put it in, you can't close the cover anymore and you have to permanently leave it upside down. Of course there's a danger to this because if the unit is on and you accidentally touch the op amp, who knows what will happen. Now on the website, on Burson website, there are other smaller op amps that should fit this unit. It would be very nice for those of you who have tried the other op amps from Bursa to leave a comment. Now when I first got this unit before I changed the op amp of the stack, I thought that the performance was it was okay, serviceable. I would say that it was better than the DAX that I've tried in the past a few years ago. So I was quite impressed that today with the improvement in technology, how a $300 DAC can outperform a DAC that's many times its price of the past. Now, once I change the op amp, the first thing I notice is that it is more refined. Budget gear and high-end gear, one of the key difference is in the refinement. And this raised the level of this DAC to a different league. Details are more clear. Separations are better. The performance in terms of ref like the refinement part has leveled up enough for me to go like, wow. What a difference. Now, I'm not saying that the tone change, meaning it's still cool neutral, but I would say the little things such as the soundstage having a little bit more air, the layering is a little bit better. A little things here and there adding up together makes a big difference. Next thing I notice is the smoothness. The fluidity has improved significantly. Significant enough for me to be able to really enjoy it. And it's a good thing that the overall tone characteristic did not change because I actually like the fact that it's slightly tilted up on the top end because of the gear that I paired it with. You see what I did? I paired it with my XTZ Edge Power Amp. Now, for those of you who don't know, I made a video on it, so go check it out. For me, that Power Amp is slightly, slightly rolled off. Some people might say it's neutral, but for me, it was a great match. And I matched it with my Q Acoustic 3050i speaker, which is known not to be a bright speaker. So that match together was fabulous. And I really, really enjoyed it. It had good synergy, that system. And my only regret is that I didn't get a chance to try it with, uh, let's say, Focal speakers, bright speakers. You know what? I think I'm going to do it in the sound demo, comparing the Q Acoustic with the Focal. Who knows? Maybe with the Focal, it sounds great. Now, what I did do is that I did put the DAC into a very high-end system, over 20 grand, driving these Waftel behind me. You see, Waftel Elysium 4 is a smooth-sounding speaker. So adding a DAC like this gives it a little bit more bite. And it is the right kind of DAC to pair with the speaker. I'm just saying DAC with this kind of sound signature is the right DAC for it. So I can see people with Poke Audio 707 enjoying the stack because it adds a little bit more energy on the top end. So I always say there's no such thing as the best stack, but rather how you use the gear in hand. How do you match them? How do you pair them? It's all a question of synergy. All right, so let's wrap it up at this point. I know today's title is like a clickbait title, budget deck with unlimited possibility. But think about it for a second. Let's say you buy the stack and you change the op amp on it. You know, a few months later, a new op amp comes out better one, you can actually change it again. And you can keep changing as time goes by. After all, not all of us want to change DAC every year, right? So this is one option. And if you think about it, all the DACs in the 300 area right now, I bet you they're very competitive. They're very good. And I would say that not one will be better than the other overall. DAC A might be a little bit better in, let's say, soundstage than DAC B. DAC B might be better than DAC C, let's say, in the bass area, and so forth. So for me, there are probably no clear winners. Well, I don't know until I try all of them in my home, right? So what's important is how they stand out from the crowd. 
Now in this case, the X8, given the fact that you can change up and does stand out from the crowd in that sense. So something for you to think about. Now, before I let you go, just a reminder, if you do plan to purchase this unit, go check out Hi-Fi Go because this video is made possible thanks to them sending me this unit. All right, I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.